Hello, what's good? New video here. I was gonna make another one of those one of the mill trailer breakdowns for that last massive trailer HBO put out a few days ago for House of the Dragon, but I'm already late and there's not much I care to add to the discussion. However, I do think it would be fun to talk about all the promo stuff that's given us a good look at all the changes to what we got familiar with in Game of Thrones. Cause House of the Dragon will be implementing a few new things, like black people, that's gotten guys like this typing extra fiercely at their keyboard. I'm joking, but talks about diversity hires have taken a weird turn lately with people claiming shows and movies are getting too woke. Since when did diversity hires equate to everyone's favorite buzzword wokeness? Trust me, it has more economic reasons than a political agenda. It seems like some don't know where to point their frustrations. Since I'm beyond bored of the topic of Valerion's being black and House the Dragon, I should move on because I'm taken away from the really good job HBO was doing with the marketing. Whoever's putting these teasers and trailers together have been killing it. Of course, there's going to be a section of the fan base blindly disliking anything Game of Thrones related after the finale. The Lord of the Rings Amazon show is dealing with an extreme version of this, auto-disliking and hating. For most shows and movies, I think avoiding trailers makes for a better viewing experience. But somehow, talking about these things have become a job, so I've been consuming everything. And keeping an eye out on House the Dragon marketing has been more enjoyable than it should. Particularly the first teaser and the recent official trailer. There's also been a recent behind the scenes with the man himself, author of the book series. This is all adapting George R. R. Martin. The showrunners for this prequel talk about how important it is to keep this adaptation as close to the source material and not change things for the sake of changing things. These two have no issues with changing what we're used to from Game of Thrones. The big one being the Iron Throne. The throne room's looking a little different in the Red Keep, isn't it? This here is the Iron Throne depicted in all of Martin's books. Obviously, this would be stupid, ridiculously impractical, set design-wise. So some melted swords around the Iron Throne we remember is what House of the Dragon is going with. Looking at the lore, this sharp chair was made when Aegon the Conqueror, the Targaryen to first unite the Seven Kingdoms, had his massive dragon melt all the Lord's swords that bent the knee to his family. It was a lot of swords. It was made to be uncomfortable to sit on as a reminder to any king that succeeds Aegon's reign that this position should never be cozy. If you aren't cautious, some of the throne's blades will cut you and they have sliced up a Targaryen or two. I like this new Iron Throne in House of the Dragon. I also like what they're doing with the dragon's appearance on the visual effects end. Each dragon has a unique look to it. Game of Thrones only had to deal with three dragons, so slight color variations could pass and would save some money on the budget, as crazy high as it was. That's not gonna fly in House of the Dragon. We're gonna be seeing 21 dragons going at it. Well, hopefully 21. Some might get the axe. Color variations might not be enough to keep people following along with what dragon's what and which belongs to which Targaryen. The official trailer showed different shots of Daemon's bonded beast, Caraxes. They got the blood red color down and added some identifying horns. Saddles were also used in the Civil War, so they can go crazy customizing that too. A lot of comments are still talking about the bad blonde wigs. They don't bother me one bit. I'm already really liking Daemon Targaryen's casting. He's pulling off the whole Rogue Prince persona and we've only seen what, less than a minute of his acting? But there will be a lot of Daemon, as there should. This new location that he's fighting in looks like the Stepstones. This is the name of a batch of small islands between the continent Westeros and Essos. It used to be a solid landmass, not some connect the dots. Back when it was called the Arm of Dorne. Thousands of years back, it was used by the first men on Westeros to migrate over here from Essos. They use it as a bridge. The children of the forest were tired of the countless first men walking over so decided to use their magic to blow it up into island sized bits. At one point in the lore, the dragon controlling Valyrians thought to take control of all the trade passing through here. But in the current timeline, only Valyrian dragon lords left in the world are the Targaryens. And they don't control it. Nowadays, it's just a pirate's hiding place, because the Stepstones are disputed lands up for grabs. Easy pickings for a dragon rider, especially one as restless and overconfident as this royal prince. Unless they want to dedicate some of the budget to all of these Targaryens enjoying their dragon taming abilities by flying over every corner of this world. We're not going to be seeing too many new places. This will be a very King's Landing centric story. A more extravagant version from what we've seen in Game of Thrones. This is the Targaryens in the height of their power. Almost untouchable in strength compared to the other houses. So us viewers gotta look out for small knights additions. The Stepstones will probably be as exotic of a location that we'll get. So little to no Essos. Like what we experienced with Daenerys traveling around this eastern continent for six seasons. Also no beyond the wall or the wall itself at all for that matter. The Kingsguard's armor is also altered for this older time period. In Game of Thrones, the iconic armor was gold with a white cape. It seems like the new showrunners are trying to adapt this armor a little closer to the books, which is described as intricate with white enameled scales. The Red Keep and even Dragonstone look the same. 
So far from the handpicked scenes, we've got all these characters are living up to this fan favorite bit of lore. Again, weird to see people complaining about wigs. Hair never took me out of the show escapism. If you've been waiting to finally see the actors who will be playing the role of Aegon II and his younger brother Aemond One-Eye, we got both last week. I thought they nailed the casting when it was announced months back, even made a whole post. And with all the wardrobe, still all thumbs up for me. Just don't know how they're going to explain how this guy is the younger brother. An older actor might have to come in later, I guess, to play Aegon II in subsequent seasons. HBO's been showing us a lot to reel us back into this world. We might get a final trailer closer to the August 21 premiere date for that last boost of hype. For all you guys saying you're not going to watch or don't care after Game of Thrones Season 8, who are you fooling? If you're watching me talk about it, you're looking at the calendar like the rest of us here. I got more Targaryen lore videos coming up, so back to the real work. See you guys then.